Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're looking at a Vintage SF book from 1957, Rogan Space by Frederick Brown. I thought to start off talking about the book, it might be best actually to read the first few pages. There are two rogues in space we're talking about here, one an alien and the other a human, starting in chapter one. Call him by no name, for he had no name. He did not know the meaning of name, or of any other word. He had no language, for he had never come into contact with any other living being in the billions of light years of space that he had traversed from the far rim of the galaxy in the billions of years that it had taken him to make that journey. For all he knew or had ever known, he was the only living being in the universe. He had not been born, for there was no other like him. He was a piece of rock, a little over a mile in diameter, floating free in space. There are myriads of such small worlds, but they are dead rock, inanimate matter. He was aware, and an entity. An accidental combination of atoms into molecules had made him a living being. To our present knowledge, such an incident has happened only twice in infinity and eternity. The other such event took place in the primeval ooze of Earth, where carbon atoms formed sentient life that multiplied and evolved. Spores from Earth had drifted across space and had seeded the two planets nearest to it, Mars and Venus, and when a million years later man had landed on those planets, he found vegetable life waiting for him there. But that vegetable life, although it had evolved quite differently from vegetable life as man knew it, had still originated on Earth. Nowhere but on Earth had life originated to evolve and multiply. The entity from the far side of the galaxy did not multiply. He remained unique and alone. Nor did he evolve except in the sense that his awareness and his knowledge grew. Without sensory organs, he learned to perceive the universe about him. Without language, he learned to understand its principles and its mechanics and how to make use of them to move through space freely and to do many other things. Call him a thinking rock, a sentient planetoid. Call him a rogue, in the biological sense of the word rogue, an accidental variation. Call him a rogue in space. He roamed space, but he did not search for other life, other consciousness, for he had long since assumed that none existed. He was not lonely, for he had no concept of loneliness, he had no concept of good and evil, for a lone being can know neither. Morality arises only in our attitude toward others. He had no concept of emotion, unless a desire to increase awareness and knowledge, we call it curiosity, can be called an emotion. Now, after billions of years, but neither young nor old, he found himself nearing a small yellow sun that had nine planets circling about it. There are many such. Chapter 2. Call him Crag. It was the name he was using, and it will serve as well as any name. He was a smuggler, and a thief, and a killer. He'd been a spaceman once, and had a metal hand to show for it. That, and a taste for exotic liquors, and a strong aversion for work. Work would have been futile for him in any case. He would have had to work a week, at anything but crime, to buy a single binge on even the cheapest of the nepenths that alone made life worth living. He knew good from evil, but cared not a grain of Martian sand for either of them. He was not lonely, for he had made himself self-sufficient by hating everyone. What exactly is a rogue? One definition is a person whose behavior one disapproves of, but who is nonetheless likable or attractive. One of the first rogues that comes to mind is Han Solo from Star Wars. But Craig pushes the disapproval further. He is a criminal, he is a misogynist, and he is homophobic. He only looks out for himself. And yet, there are some likable qualities about him. This is a novel of two halves. The first half is Craig's story. He is set up for a crime that he has not committed. The judge in the case, before sentencing, pulls Craig aside. He offers him a job, a criminal job. 
His reward? Freedom and a million dollars. There is a lot of action involved in his escape. And then we're off to space. The judge and his wife accompany him to Mars. On Mars, Craig has to infiltrate a laboratory and steal some technology. This criminal caper doesn't work out so well for the judge, his wife, and Craig. That's the first half of the novel. We don't see the sentient rock at all after that first chapter that I read. But now, the rock comes into play. I really don't want to tell you too much more about this novel, but suffice it to say that Craig and The Rock become partners of a sort. Interesting wordplay there with Craig and Rock. I found this novel a bit unsettling. It definitely had a lot of adventure and, of course, first contact. But it felt awkward and a bit icky to have Craig be the first contact. Brown makes his protagonist very unlikable. And yet, there's an element of anti-hero to him. This book was a pulp novel, but of the higher order. Brown is a good writer. It can be uncomfortable at times, but fun as well. I give it 6.5 out of 10. If you're interested in more Frederick Brown, Ira, Matt, and I read The Best of Frederick Brown. I'll put a link in the description of this video. So have you read Rogue in Space? Are you a fan of Frederick Brown? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, rock on.